everybody welcome back to my channel ashley here boogie stitcher on youtube schleesum underscore boogie stitcher on instagram coming to you guys with a stitch with me this is a follow-up video to my um new craft day unboxing video and we're gonna go ahead and start with the owls pattern um here is a picture of it in all of its beautiful glory and we're gonna go ahead and start with this top owl because i just can't I can't help it. He's adorable. So we're going to go ahead and start with him. And we're just going to dive right into it. So again, thank you so much, New Craft Day, for sending these kits to me to review for you. And thank you all so much for joining me. We're going to work with this beautiful pinkish lavender color. So we're just going to pull one thread out. And I'll try and show this the best I can again, just in case. So how I do my three strand loop start is I put my finger on here and while holding this, I grab one of the ends of the thread like so. I know it's a tad blurry. Um, my camera's having a hard time focusing on what the heck is going on, but then you pull, leaving your finger on the top of that thread, and then you grab this and fold it up to the top of that thread right here. Then you grab the two, and then you just pull, 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 till you get to the end. And as you can see, my tail is a tad bit longer than my loop. So I'm going to put my finger in the loop, grab the side that's closest to the thread, which is right here, and just pull a little bit while keeping tension on the loop and the thread at the top of the needle. And then I'm going to look again and see how close I am. And that's close enough for me. I can just clip off the end. Or what I can do is instead I can use this even end. Um to be my loop start and this one be up by the needle. So actually I'm going to do that. So I'm going to thread the needle. So I, let me try and slow that down. So I thread my needle by wrapping all three strings around the top of the eye, turn the eye up and down, and then I pinch the thread and pull my needle out. Focus, 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 focus. And then I'm going to take the eye of the needle and I'm going to pinch the thread until I can barely see it. Put the eye over the top of where that needle it, or the threads are. Poke them through. While keeping pressure with my finger, I then grab all three threads. And that is how I thread my needle. That works the best for me as compared to grabbing the end of the thread and trying to poke it through the eye. I, I have glasses. I can't see that well, so that's not going to work for me. All right, so we're going to just start stitching. I'm going to stitch these two random yellow squares right here. And again, sorry for the wobbliness, but my craft stand is not the best. It works for its job. We're going to stitch these two random symbols over here. Get them out of the way, and then we're going to work around the beautiful eye eyes of the owl. So then we're going to scoot closer towards there and we're just going to start stitching. I hope you all are having a great Friday. I know I am. I, my son let me sleep in until almost seven o'clock, which I know that sounds like, oh, seven o'clock is, you know, pretty good, I guess. But, um, if you have little ones or had little ones or know of people with little ones, you know <laughs> that the kids don't sleep very good. At least my son, he's normally up by five in the morning. So, uh, you know, seven o'clock is unheard of. So it was really nice. I got to sleep in run some errands, made the kiddo some lunch, and my kiddos are still sick, but slowly getting better, so hopefully they just continue to get better.
I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit. I feel like this might be a tad bit too close to your eyes. So one second. Is that better? No, that's worse. There we go. That might be better. Okay, we'll try that and see what happens. I think it always looks like less focused on my screen than it actually normally is on the video. No, I liked it. It was more focused when I went in here. There we go. Okay, whatever. It is what it is. Oops, see? See? I was chit-chatting and then messing with the camera and then went up and down instead of across the, the X like a goob. Anyway, I hope you all are having a great Friday. I hope you all have a fabulous weekend if it's already your weekend time. Get some stitching in. And you know what? If you don't get any stitching in, I hope you find a wonderful book or a fabulous craft to work on. Keep your hands busy. Or heck, take a nap. Naps are great. Right? I love me a good nap. Me personally, I need to do some laundry. I have all of our clean clothes. Like, all of our clothes are clean. But they're all, like, in a pile. <laughs> I need to fold the laundry. Alright. We're just going to work on this symbol and then I think after this symbol we're going to work on this green I think. What color is green? Green is 159 so it's like a, a baby bluish color. Grayish? A grayish blue. Bluish gray? How would you say that? I think it would be bluish gray. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, so Friday is this means it's the start of my pick whatever you want weekend. I normally start at like midday Friday. And alas, it's midday Friday. So that means I can pick whatever I want in my whip stash to stitch on. Last two weekends, I only ended up stitching a little bit. Um... On like um, patterns or whips that weren't in my main stash. I um, ended up stitching most of the weekend on my main whip stash, which is great. Heck, that's what I feel like doing, then go for it. Um, it's been really nice to kind of get progress done on those. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I think in my whip update, I forgot to show you guys the Mini Beloved, which is a Heaven Earth Designs pattern. And I forgot to show you guys Warrior Girl, because I had stitched on both of those a little bit too. I think I forgot to show you guys. And I can't remember if I showed you guys The Secret Garden, which is also at Heaven or Designs. I'm going to have to watch back my video. You know, funny story is when I do these videos, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Like, the second I get done with the video, I'm like, I have no idea what I just said. And it's only until... I like do any sort of editing that I need to do um, that I realize like what I said because then I have to watch some of it back but um, yeah if I don't have to do any sort of editing I don't watch my videos so sometimes I have I have no idea what I said in my video because I'm just talking I'm just talking as if I'm like talking to my mom on the phone <laughs> like, Y'all, my friends, I just, I'm just, my husband, call, what is he, he doesn't really have a name for it, but he basically, when I get with my best friend and we start chit-chatting, he, he goes, bzz, 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 like a bee, like a bumblebee. Um, and it's funny because, yeah, it's really true. I just, it's like word vomit, blah, 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 blah. You can't understand anything I'm saying because I'm just talking. But that's okay. I like talking to everybody. Even if I'm only talking to myself. 
I never feel like I'm talking to myself, so that's the thing. It's like when I'm doing these videos and like my update videos, I I truly feel like I'm like not talking to myself, but I'm talking to to you guys, gals, everybody. I just feel like as if you're all in here and we're just sharing our whips together. That, that's what I feel like when I record, which is nice. I think it makes like making the videos 10 times better and funner, which is why this is so much fun to do. And if you're all, I've gotten a couple messages about people wanting to start um, some floss tube channels. And you know what I say? I say, heck yeah, man. You can never have too many floss tubers ever, 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 ever. Um, if y'all have any questions about anything that I do, I can share. I'm definitely a beginner and I by no means have it all together, <laughs> but I can at least tell you what I do and hope that that helps. Um, but yeah, if you're like on the fence about doing it, just do it. You got it. When I first started my channel, I was like, no one's going to watch my channel. No one's going to watch me. But then I post my first video and I was like, holy cow. People watch me. It's like, I think my first video, it took a little bit to get like 30 some odd views. And I was like, I was so excited about it though. I was like, you know what? I can't have 30 people in my house. So the fact that I got like 30 views, it's freaking awesome, man. And it will only go up from there. Could you imagine? Let's see, I have like 780 some odd subscribers. Could you imagine that many people in one single location to sit there and just chit chat about chit chit chat oh my gosh that was coming out as like naughty words um about sorry <laughs> chit chat about uh cross stitch there'd be so many people all in one location so yeah i just love everybody joining me with my videos and um sharing other floss tubers with me so that way I can watch their videos. I absolutely love watching floss tube videos. And I'm always looking for new floss tubers to watch. Pass the time. See what everyone else is working on. Be influenced. I love it. So if you have something to share. Just want to say hi. You know. Have a question. Or, or anything. Just leave a comment. You know, or heck, comment to other people's comments. Um, you know, I love the cross stitching community because we're all just so accepting. Um, it's the only community I've ever seen, although it's also the only community I've ever been a part of. So maybe I'm biased, <laughs> but everyone is just open arms and full of information. And I absolutely love that. It's like, you have a question you don't have to feel scared to ask it in this community. And if for some reason you feel scared to ask it, then ask me. And if I don't know the answer, then I'll ask some of my stitching friends and see if they know the answer. And I can try and relay the, the answer back to you. I think it just, you know, the more we can spread the love, whether or not you like samplers or stamped kits or counted... Full coverage, not full coverage, tapestry. The more we can spread the love of this craft, the better. I mean, heck, think about it. In the 1800s, um, you know, over in England area, I don't know about over here, um, but, I mean, they used to embroider all the time. I'm sure they probably did over here, too, in the States. But it's like, that was like, you know, a woman took care of the household and then, you know, embroidered samplers and stuff and pillowcases and stuff. So spread the love of the craft. And if you don't like this craft, then spread the love of another craft. You know, there's all kinds of crafts, diamond painting, paint by number, coloring, Crochet, knitting, all kinds of stuff that people can do. Me, what are you doing in here, crazy kitty? All right, I think.
think we got one more color in me for this for this video. So let's do a green. Let's do 159. The green symbol. That's not a green color. <laughs> it's like the grayish blue. Right? Wouldn't that be considered like a grayish bluish gray? I think it's it's more proper to say bluish gray. Of course the kitty cat opened up my door, so we're gonna hear a little bit more background noise because if I try and get up, I'm gonna bump you guys and make you guys motion sick. And I'm just there we go. All right, so we're gonna work on this green symbol. We'll do this thread and then we'll switch to our other cottage. All right, here we go. Do, 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 do. Let's see if I can find where it goes. There we go. Ha, ah, there. Again, I have no rules when it comes to cross stitching. Um, I just stitch whatever tickles my fancy. And if I get bored of a color, like say I got bored of this um, bluish gray, I would just pull my needle out. I'd park it, pull my needle out, and start working something else. So that's that's how I roll. No rules here. I like how this one there's several different owls so I can kind of like treat each owl as if it's like a mini finish you know so you got this owl right here and there's like a small border around it for the background and then there's like another owl so like here is like the center of the background and I can just kind of treat it as like each little each little thing so that's kind of cool that's you know different ways you can fine to keep yourself motivated on working on something. For this one, I don't think I'm going to need any sort of motivation because my daughter's going to be like, um, are you working on my owls? Are you working on my owls? So I, I recently just got one of my custom stamped kits in. Um, it's like a trio of the um, starting Pokemon, so Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander. And um, I recently got that in and I'm stitching that for my son and he's like two and a half and um and he, every time I sit down and he asks me you working on my Pokemon but the way he says Pokemon it's like pokey on <laughs> it's, it is the cutest and I'm like yeah do you want me to work on your Pokemon yeah okay I'll, I'll grab your Pokemon and he calls them his dinosaurs it's so cute so, um, I'll have to share that in my next whip update because they're part of my main whip stash. But yeah, I have, I don't need motivation because, you know, I got my kiddo saying, are you going to stitch on that? Are you going to stitch on that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll stitch on that for you, you know? And then if that doesn't work and I don't know what to stitch on, you know, I have you guys and gals reaching out to me saying, hey, what are you stitching? And I'd be like, I don't know. What should I stitch? You guys are like, you know, the castle, warrior girl, or cottage, or, you know, whatever you guys choose. And I'm like, okay, sure. I'll stitch on that. Or I got my mom. I'm like, I don't know what to stitch. She'd be like, stitch on this. I'm like, sweet. All right, cool. And gosh, between you guys and my mom and my brain and my kids heck I got like a like a real life spin the wheel kind of thing it's great I love it so that being said if there's something that you guys want me to stitch on let me know I'd be happy to grab it and stitch on it for a little bit I love everything I work on so I'd be happy to stitch on something you guys want all right, here's the last stitch. So, uh, yeah, the symbols on this canvas are super awesome. Um, very vibrant, which is exactly what you want in a stamped kit. 
Um, if for some reason I had a problem deciphering any of the colors, um, you know, I have the chart to refer to, which is right here. So if I'm like, oh gosh, I don't, I don't know what that symbol is. What is that? I can look at it on the paper, go right here and then come over to the key and be like, oh, that's 950. Sweet. Okay, cool. Um, so keep that in mind. Not all of the stamping on the kits are as vibrant as this one. This one's definitely very well done. And so was the cottage. Um, but yeah, thank you again for joining me. I will go ahead and pause and we'll grab the cottage and we'll check out that canvas and see how it does. So, uh, stay tuned. I'll see you in just a minute. Bye. Hello everybody. Welcome back. We've got our next project. It's also the next day. I have my heater on, so hopefully it's not too much noise because I am freezing and my hands are freezing. And if my hands are freezing, I just can't stitch very well. So we got all this going. Again, hopefully it's not too loud for you, but it is necessary today because it's cold. <laughs> so <clears throat> here we are working on the cottage. Let me grab pattern for you. So here is our other cross stitch one. Ta, ta, ta. We're going to start right over here in this beautiful tree. Right up here. So that's what we're doing right now. So let's just get to it. We're going to stitch this blue. It's like blue circle symbol I think. So over here is a little bit tight with my stand but I'll try and get this small section done as quickly as possible because it's a little awkward. Yeah. I had to stop for a second because I was like, well, did I just, am I stitching with three strands or? I couldn't even remember if I had. I was just working on accounted <clears throat> my um, mini moon charmer and I stitched that one on 16 count with two strands full cross and I so when I just sat down to start working on this one I was like wait a second did I just do two strands or three I'm confused it's okay I have my coffee here I'm trying to drink my coffee with less stuff in it. So normally I do like a splash of hazelnut creamer, which of course has sugar in it. And then I do two splashes of sugar-free hazelnut syrup to get a little extra sweet, but not quite as much sugar, even though the fake sugars are bad for you too. And then I, um, <clears throat> I sometimes put a little bit of heavy whipping cream in there as well, just like one splash. And with a giant 32 ounce iced coffee um, that I make myself. And yeah, that's just terrible for you because I'll normally drink two to three of those a day. And that's like, yeah, that's just what I drink is iced coffee all day long. It's delicious and I can't help it. I can't help it. It's a bad habit um, because it tastes so good and I'm addicted to it. <laughs> so this morning I decided that I was just going to try and drink straight black hot coffee. And I did. I drank about a cup and a half of straight black coffee. And now um, I'm going to treat myself to one cup. So one 32 ounce cup of my iced coffee, except this time I use two splashes of the sugar-free hazelnut and only a tiny splash of creamer, the hazelnut creamer. So it has significantly less stuff in it. So I'm just going to try and like weasel my way down to like having less stuff in my coffee. But anyway, I got my coffee here. Hopefully that will help me. I don't know, my brain function. My hands are freezing, so of course I'm stitching a tad bit slower today than normal. Almost 
feel like I've been like playing in the snow. It's crazy. My hands and my legs get like this where <clears throat> if they get too hold, they just don't function very good. <laughs> my hands especially and then my legs, if my legs get too cold or my feet get too cold, I actually get leg aches. Um, you know, like growing pains. So, yeah, I just try really hard to keep myself warm. Even though, I mean, we have our house at 71 degrees right now. But I think because it's so cold outside um, and we have hardwood floors, the, the floors tend to be colder, which just kind of keeps the house colder. Even though we have everything set to be at 71 degrees, it's still 71 degrees is... I don't think the house is actually staying at 71 degrees. It's the problem. Anyway, that was a long tangent just to say that I'm cold and, so, and I'm switching slower because I'm cold. <laughs> uh, maybe I should drink some more coffee. I got half the house asleep right now. That's good. I figured I'd sneak back here and try and film the rest of this video. There's no way I was going to be able to film this <clears throat> yesterday, too. Along with the, the owls. There was just... The cards were not aligning <laughs> how I needed them to. So. But, you know, we... I do this at my convenience, basically. This isn't, like, a job for me or anything. This is a hobby. And so... I do it when I can. But I got 257 stitches done on Moon Charmer this morning, which is nice and un unheard of for a counted, you know, during the day for me like that. So that was good. And then last night I ended up staying up until 1.30 stitching on my cottage. And I ended up getting, let's see, I was working on three rows and I think I got down to like right here. So I got like all this, there was some like fill in stitches in here. So they weren't full like blocks, but one, two, three, four, five, six. So I got like, I don't think I got a thousand stitches. I got more, probably around more like 800 or so stitches done on the cottage last night. So just wait for my update video, you guys and gals. It is going to blow your socks off because I got some crazy stitching done on that. And I'm still feeling it too. I did take a break. I stitched a little bit on it, more on it this morning. Um, but then I took a break because it's like, well, some of the other things I have need my attention. <clears throat> So I've been given my attention to like, not, not a little bit of everything yet, but it's definitely, it definitely feels like one of those days where it's like, I'm just going to stitch a little bit on kind of everything. That's how yesterday was. I stitched on like 155 stitches on the castle yesterday and 180 something, no, 230 something on a stitching shelf. And then like 150 or so on one of my new patterns, Bulbasaur, which you guys haven't seen yet, but you will. And then I stitched maybe 100 stitches more on the owls, the new owls. And then also I stitched on, I think, I think that's all I stitched on yesterday. But that's how it goes. Like on the weekends when I leave these free days, I normally just kind of go crazy where it's like I'm touching everything or as many things as I could think of or that I want to stitch. Like if I want to stitch it, then I just go grab it and put some stitches into it until I feel like I'm done or I need a break and then I switch to something else. And sometimes I'll return to that pattern again. So for example, yesterday morning, I stitched on Bulbasaur a little bit Maybe like 100 stitches, 150 stitches. And then I took a break. And then um, I went back to it later in the day. And the stitched like another 100 or so stitches on it. So, yeah, that's, that's how I roll. 
That's what I end up doing like a crazy person. But you know, that's how I get things accomplished. You know, little bits here and there. And little bits add up to big bits. So. And go in the hole. Yeah. I couldn't seem to find the hole. I always feel so awkward stitching so because I'm at the top because we decided to do the top left corner to do the trees. But I'm so because of that, I don't have a ton of room right here. And I'm stitching I'm kind of like right next to the stand. The like this my stand is like right here if you can't see it. And so I just feel like I'm like stitching kind of slow because I'm squished. All right, now I'm going to try something. I'm attempting to look into my camera as I'm filming to see if I can see what I'm doing and to stitch this way. No, I can't. That's gonna that's gonna give me motion sickness. <laughs> I'm just curious. Give it a shot. Stare in the camera while I'm stitching. Use the camera as my eyes, but no. So right now I'm like my head's like over here off to the side, out of the way of the light. I need to try and position the light to where it's like I don't know, not in my face or next to my face. If you guys saw the way I was positioned to film this video, you'd probably laugh at me and tell me to figure something else out. <laughs> but honestly, I think this angle or this like setup I have this morning is going to be my best stitch with me video as far as like the end of this video anyway. You know, I'm not having to worry about it being out of focus seems to have everything in screen you guys can see what I'm doing not fussing with the camera for once maybe maybe I just needed a few more stitch with me to get this figured out <laughs> my hands not in the way of you guys seeing what I'm doing I don't think anyway <laughs> ah dang it I'm playing yarn or thread chicken and I am not Winning. Anyway, I hope you all are having a fabulous morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. For me, it's about noon here. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Hey, Google, what time is it? There you go. Look at that technology. 1.37 p.m. here. <laughs> what would we do without Google? Okay. We'll do... I don't want to stitch the same color like this whole video, like I have been. It seems like I pick like one or two colors and just kind of stitch those. So after this strand, we're gonna, we're gonna switch colors. Cause I wanna get something that's not quite as boring to stare at. Although this is a very nice color. Very lovely. This is what, 318? What is this? No, 336. I was going to say, I think 318 is actually like a grayish color. the sound of the needle going through the canvas it's, it's almost like therapy 
therapy to my ears. And of course, it's that time that I say that, but the heater kicks on. <laughs> Thank you, heater. Thank you. These threads are so soft. They're so nice to work with. I love them. Because the, the threads I'm using for Mini Moon Charmer, which is what I was just working on, are DMC. And they're just so much thinner and scratchier feeling. Again, as far as the longevity, I don't, I'm, I don't know if they'll last longer or not. But it's like, man, these are just so much different compared to DMC. It's just, these are like baby skin and DMC is like my skin you know 32 year old skin <laughs> big difference can't wait to get the other cottage, my first cottage done so I can get this one started. I think that's why I was kind of inspired to work on it last night because it was just, I did the unboxing for this one and I was like, ah, oh, I have to get that other cottage done. I'm still not going to rush it. If I rush things or like I put restrictions on myself, again, I just then I don't want to do them. And so I'm not saying I have to get the cars done at any specific time. And I'm also saying I, I'm not telling myself I can't stitch on this cottage. It's just my main cottage is in my main whip stash. So I can work on it during the week. And then I can always work on this cottage on the weekend. You know, on my freebie days. That stitch is kind of messy. Normally I don't mind messy stitches, but that one's significantly messy. Alright, well I'm fixing this stitch. Let's see. What number should we do next? Let's do 12 next. This like purple color. That looks cool. All right, switch colors. Just making sure I have the right color because this looks a little. No, looks right. Okay. Just making sure. It just looks darker than what it should be. But I'm dropping everything. Threading my needle. Sorry, I'm threading the needle off the camera because it seems like anytime I try and thread my needle on camera to show you guys, it's crazy that I do, like it's all blurry. So it's a big deal. Ah, oh, there we go. Heater shut off. Not quite so loud in my ear. My 
I need to organize all my projects again. I just organized everything, but then I got a ton of patterns in. I have two more left to come in. Those were my birthday purchases. And then after that, I have nothing else coming in. So I need to organize like all my bags and make sure all my main whips are in like specific bags and make sure each whip has a frame of some sort, a needle and a needle minder. I don't have to have frames for all of the main whips, but it would just be so nice to, you know, if you feel the urge to work on something and it's already set up and ready to go, hassle free, then you're more apt to work on them. So I just need to go through all my projects and take any frame like off of the project if it's not a main whip and move it. And same with the bags. Make sure all my main whips have bags and all my older whips or whips that haven't made the cut, quote unquote, are in safe photo boxes or other bags, like cloth bags or something. So. And again, no new purchases until July 1st. I'm going to attempt to go longer than that. But the goal for me was at least to make it to July 1st before purchasing anything else. No new purchases. I can have all the new starts in the world, but no new purchases. Because with the collabs and my birthday and Christmas and stuff, I just have, I have a lot coming in. So it's like, oh, I need to, I need to slow down and stitch what I have before I, I start going crazy and getting any more. Because I still have several I haven't started yet, counted wise, and a couple I haven't started stamp wise. I need to finish these first so that no purchase goal of mine was to slow me down and get me stitching stitching my other stuff so far the stitching up great the Canvas is printed super well. Everything is dark and vibrant. Having no trouble reading the symbols. This canvas has an extreme margin, which is awesome. I absolutely love a good margin. It gives me space to put my hoop on and everything, which is nice. Needles are working great. Remember with a stamped kit, the fabric is very starchy, very, very starchy, stiff, hard, crispy, um, but that changes over time. The more of your natural hand oils that touch the fabric, the better. So don't, don't be scared to be rough with your patterns. Um, it just helps the process. I mean, don't throw them on the ground or, you know, stomp on them, but... You don't have to be very gentle either with them. So here, I'll show you. Let's see if I can show you without like destroying my setup here. The extra fabric for this, I basically just rolled into like a tube and then wrapped a hair tie around it. See, I'm not gentle by any means. It just helps, helps soften up the fabric and you will be so surprised if you do work on stamped kits, you'll be so surprised on how much um, the fabric changes without you even knowing it. So the, the time I notice stuff like that is when I'm working on this and then going back and working on a project that's broken in already, like my cottage, my other cottage. And it's just, I could tell that I, I tend to stitch those things more because they feel better. On my hands 
Um, the newer stamped kits are kind of hard, hard to get the groove, get the groove on because they're so crispy, crunchy, not quite as pleasurable to work on, but give it a week or two of just kind of being and being stitched on, touched, you know, and it, it changes drastically. So, but yeah, you don't really notice while you're stitching on it that it's changing. But then you go and compare like a brand new kit to, you know, one of your old ones. And it's like, oh gosh, that did change a lot, didn't it? So... We're going to pause and get a drink of coffee really fast. Try not to bump you guys. door cranking is my daughter she's coming in to grab her little kinder kindle we gave her for Christmas have some educational games downloaded on there for her to play but when she came into my room I was like I saw something out of the corner of my eye and I like you know, that like instant horror feeling where your heart starts beating, <laughs> like adrenaline starts pumping, like, <gasps> oh God, gosh, excuse me, sorry. Um, but yes, yeah, so then I looked up and then realized it was her. I was like, oh God, okay, I'm safe. It's not a monster coming to get me. <laughs> it's funny, so they've been making forts out in the living room, her and my my little boy, and um, they've been making forts out in the living room. And she, she's got this giant, like, teepee thing that we got her for her birthday a while ago. And she sets it up, and then she hangs blankets on it. So that way it'll be dark in there for her, and she can set up cool, like, lights and stuff. And um, But I was in the kitchen cooking... And I kept having the sense that, like, something was, like, looking at me. So I'd turn around, and every time I turned around and I saw her fort with the blanket on it, I kept thinking it was a person. But really, it wasn't a person. It's just her fort. And, you know, I can't apparently logically tell my brain that, oh, that's a tent. That's not a person. Because it happened to me, like, three or four times where I was just like, oh, gosh. Oh, wait. It's just, oh, it's just a fort. Gosh, dang it. But, yeah, I can't. It kept scaring me. Yeah. Who's the chicken now? Me. I'm the chicken. You can stand in front of me and say boo and I will jump and get super scared. That's just... You know, that's me. <laughs> Alright, guys. I think... I'm going to go ahead and end it after this thread. Thank you again, New Craft Day, for sending these kits over to me to review. Uh, the kits are fabulous. Very well printed. The floss is super soft. I haven't had one tangle, knock on wood. Um, yeah, everything's been great. And thank you so much for kitting it up for me and providing a really good um, photo of not a blurry photo of the of the pattern because that makes it really helpful to show my followers 
So thank you all so much for, for hanging out with me, doing this dish with me. Um, I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a great weekend. Get some stitching time in. And you know what? If you don't get any stitching time in, I hope you just get some some time to do whatever you want. Whether or not that's reading, diamond painting, you know, something, something for you. I hope, I hope you get a chance to just take a good 10 minutes for yourself to just recoup and revive. So thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you all have a fabulous weekend. Take care. Bye.